the army was busy. Maneuvers were constantly held to keep abreast of new technical developments and equipment, and to carry out the peacetime mission of the army, preparedness. In 1936, the American soldier was armed with a new rifle, a gun of tremendous power and accuracy, product of many years of research. An investment by our government in the time and talents of a man employed at the Springfield Armory Small Arms Center. The man was inventor John Garand, who here explains the evolution of the M1 rifle. I'm speaking to you from this United States Army, located at Springfield, Massachusetts. You are going to see some of the work that we are doing here at the present time. However, allow me to tell you some of the development at this summary from early colonial times to date. We have here one of our, the first rifle made at the Springfield Armory. This is muzzle loader, is a flint lock ignition type developed at the Springfield Armory and used since <coughs> 1795 until the 1840s. Then this uh, muzzle loader cap ignition primer was developed by the armory and used until 1873. And this sanifier, fire and pin action, came into use for the same purpose. This is the 193 Springfield rifle that was made famous <coughs> in World War I and is still a good rifle today. In World War I, about 1916, 17, I got interested in making an automatic rifle. And this one here is a gas piston operated automatic rifle that was developed in manufactures at the Springfield Armory in World War II and to date. This happens to be the three millionth uh, rifle of this design. By the way, this is a forging from which the receiver of the M1 rifle is manufactured. This forging is produced in our own armory from field armory shops and on drop hammers and uh, represents rather heavy weight, several times that of the finished receiver used on the M1. This. For the future, we should develop a lighter rifle with the available lighter ammunition that we have now and alloys, steel, better knowledge. It should be a nice project for the younger generations to tackle and furnish our infantry with the best rifle in the world in years to come. More than 1,800 separate operations make an M1 rifle. And this drop forge is one of the first steps as raw steel and wood are transformed into an instrument of deadly accuracy. A far cry from the early days of gun manufacturing as practiced here at the Springfield Armory, when in one year, 1795, 40 employees turned out a total of 245 muskets. At its peak in modern times, Daily production reached 4,600 rifles a day. But the use of machine tools has never affected the high standards of manufacture at Springfield, a tradition established right from the start when gunsmiths had to pay for the material that they spoiled apart, and they faced fine or imprisonment if their gun didn't shoot straight. Many special pieces of equipment and apparatus have been developed at the armory. A strange looking machine is this barrel straightener, 
which is for visually checking and straightening the new borings. The armory is the small arms center of the United States forces. Here are concentrated the Ordnance Corps facilities for experimental development of hand weapons, including rifles and automatic weapons, also for pilot line production. Besides being the nerve center for small arms research, it is the repository of the latest production techniques and newest developments in the art of military gun making. Constant inspections make certain that Springfield products measure up to specifications. The armory also checks civilian produced items for conformance to standards. The inspection division trains and supervises personnel assigned to civilian plants. Close tolerances are necessary for parts like this receiver. The ghost of Thomas Blanchard stalks the woodworking shop as a modern counterpart of his lathe changes blanks of American walnut into gun stocks. In addition to its normal production, the armory is required to have extra capacity to handle special emergency jobs. A weapon of limited application might take many months to produce outside. The 93 separate parts which constitute the M1 are all turned out from raw material, each of them fabricated with precision and interchangeable in any other M1 rifle. High standards are rooted in the American tradition of rifle design, standards which have produced a variety of models, all of which have been able to match or outperform the rifle used by enemies of the United States. These standards are preserved in the manufacturing methods at Springfield methods and trained personnel held ready to be passed on to civilian plants in time of national emergency. Test firing is one of the last inspections. The many rigid checks along the way and accurate methods of manufacture make it rare that a piece is rejected in this stage. The tradition of Springfield Armory, pride in craftsmanship, together with willingness and the goal toward which to point, has resulted in superior results. The best small arms in the world, insurance against aggressors. New concepts quickly became routine as infantrymen developed the tactic of vertical envelopment. Taking a cue from the enemy, the Germans' successful airborne invasion of the island of Crete American forces quickly enlarged the scope of the flying infantrymen and created a tremendous airborne striking force. But even though the tactics might be extraordinary, the paratrooper was still a rifleman. And when he landed, he fought with the same weapons as the infantrymen who advanced on foot. American soldiers in Europe led the free world back across the continent. Equipped with John Garand's M1 rifle, their firepower was infinitely greater than anything produced in opposition. With the confidence of superior arms, they battered their way to victory in World War II. By 1945, it was back to the ways of peacetime. If you wanted to shoot, it was usually in some sort of competition. Targets made of clay. The Garand rifle had proved itself over and over in combat, and every man joining the armed forces received thorough training in its operation. Indoctrination usually begins with a description of the piece. It doesn't weigh much, less than 10 pounds. For most recruits, this is the first contact with a basic weapon of the American armed forces. They learn that the gun fires eight rounds semi-automatically. 
That is, you have to pull the trigger each time to fire a round. The use of the sling is described, and the new men are shown how it aids in accurate firing. But performance is the only factor that's important in a rifle. And in this department, the M1 is superior to any basic weapon issued by any army. It produces greater firepower without decreasing accuracy. An expert rifleman gives a demonstration of the abilities of the gun which every American soldier is taught to fire. The rifle is first demonstrated being fired from a prone position. The marksman sights the target. A full clip is inserted in the receiver, and in an instant the gun is ready to be fired. Cartridges are automatically ejected, and reloading is a simple operation. Simply insert another clip of eight rounds and commence firing. Another clip of ammunition, and this time the target is highly explosive. It's a can of gasoline. 